Hello, I'm Bruce Eklund with OpNet Technologies, and we're here at OpNetwork 2012 in downtown Washington, D.C. I'm here with Mazen Kadam, a principal lead architect with Cox Communications, just discussing a little bit about how uh, Cox is making use of OpNet's technologies. So, Mazen, could you tell us a little bit about uh, your role and what you're doing at Cox? Yeah, so uh, I'm the principal lead architect for Cox Communications, and I work in the architecture group. And my job basically is uh, to find out what Cox needs to do in the next three to five years, all the architecture requirements at the network layer and some of the back at the network and the back layers as well. Oh, that's excellent. So a lot of our clients here, you know, kind of focus on the network as one of the entities that they use for their business. But in your environment, the network really is the business, right? I mean, Cox is providing services to millions of subscribers worldwide. The network has to be up and operational all the time, delivering immediate responses. Absolutely true. I mean, the Cox communication network is sort of really converged network, voice, video, and data, and for customer and for business services as well. It's really converged. So we utilize, you know some of the solutions from OpNet, Network Planner and Transfer Planner as well. And we've been using since 2003. Wow, that, that's a long time. So give us a little background. What are some of the uh, key things that you've done with the Network Planner or the Transport Planner to really help aid in the business? Well, you know, in our line of business, basically, when you think about the network, uh, we continue to increase in scale and complexity, as you know. So since 2003, right now, I think from a scale perspective, my gosh, we went like from 200 gig to close to 1.5 terabit per second from traffic. And from scalability, it went sort of from just pure IP routing, you know, for internet-based services. Right now, we carry, you know, custom, you know, like uh, VPN-based services for customers, like for voice, for video, for data, you know, E-Line services, you know, MPLS VPN services, and all the architecture sort of, and all the uh, requirements for, from latency, protection, so on and so forth. So we utilize uh, you know, the network planner for capacity planning. So basically, we know what kind of links we need for link, for links, for link dimensioning and for link placements, and we also utilize the transfer planner. So basically, we know what kind of connections we need, how many lambdas we need, when we need to upgrade, and all the sort of the convergence between the two. One thing, basically, for the uh, shared risk link group uh, restoration, for the shared risk link groups as well. Okay, that's great. So it sounds like you've got a lot of initiatives that can, then can make use of the network planner, the transport planner. Um, how big are real-time requirements coming into play in your current activities? Uh, well, that's, it's becoming lately really, really sort of uh, requirements, especially in the, in the age of cloud computations. Right now we sell you know, some of the cloud services and some of these customers, you know, when there's a latency and it depends on applications, then maybe sort of say, you know, what happens? You know, your network is not meeting our requirements and so forth. So indeed, it is a requirement. Now, that's important because I know as my kids are at home using the, you know, kind of the direct TV, they're downloading video on demand and things, and I'm watching something different. Uh, I'm very happy when I get responsiveness. You know, I immediately get what I want. I don't have to worry about that, and I don't listen to kids complaining. So I appreciate that effort. Absolutely, it is really, truly important. Given the fact right now, 50% of the traffic over any network, and certainly over Cox, is at least 50% video. And you know about video, basically. It's very, very sensitive to jitter and to packet loss. So anytime, especially for the commercial-based services as well, you know, for video on demand or for linear video broadcast, you know, we give it to our customers as opposed to video over IP. So it is very, sort of very demanding, actually. Excellent. Very, very demanding. So, uh, last question I have for you is, what's next? What, what's coming up in the industry that we should keep our eye on? Well, I think one, a couple of projects I'm working on, and I'm not, in terms of planning, is helping show the, on the shared mesh protection, shared mesh restoration. I think uh, these are, that's what we're working on right now, basically. But the next thing is software-defined networking, and what it means in the context of path computations. Because if you think about the network, <coughs> like I said, we continue to increase in scale and complexity, but right now everything becomes you know, dynamic. In, in the, is the NSP programmable networks, you know. So you really, my opinion is, as the network becomes more dynamic, you really need more network monitoring, more intelligence, and hopefully Abnet can work in that space as well. Well, that's excellent. I appreciate your time today, Mazen, and I look forward to continuing to work with you over the future years. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.